Hi, I'm Lydell. I'm uh, working at Protocol Labs. I'm part of IP First Stewards. And today I'll be talking about IPIP, um, which is interplanetary improvement process. Um, for now, it's for IPFS specifications repo, uh, but it's a pretty good name, I guess. Um, so I will go over four points why we need a process, um, what were the guiding principles behind the process uh, in the current form I'm proposing, um, how it works, and how would you propose improvements through that process, and finally, give you some examples of exist already existing uh, proposals, and just maybe propose your own. So <clears throat> on the very first day, I said um, no API is the best API. Uh, and I'm always tempted to like, remove stuff instead of adding new stuff. But what, when, when you apply that to specification, no process means bad times. Um, if you have no process for evolving specs, uh, the bigger distance from the core team is the bigger paralysis, uncertainty, stagnation is, uh, unless you know who makes decisions, how decisions are made, uh, where the source of truth exists, um, nothing will happen or we'll be stuck with the old, old decision. Uh, and if there's this stagnation, that means people who want to implement new things and are very determined, uh, that smaller subset of people, because many people will just give up, uh, they will look at the oldest implementation of IPFS as, oh, that's the source of truth. It, there's no spec, but we have those two implementations, and they have interop between them for some reason. Maybe that's the source of truth. Um, and overall, people see, oh, people who want to implement new thing, they look at whatever those two oldest implementations do. Uh, and that means no one cares about specs anymore because now you, the, like the code is specification. And that means the specs themselves are low quality or missing. Um, uh, prior art, uh, we have uh, good examples where we have IPFS specs and we have lib P2P specs. And those are good examples because at least something exists and the quality is pretty good relatively, uh, and you are able to write a specific protocol based on the specs, usually. Uh, IPFS specs, repo, not so much, at least not right now. <laughs> uh, so we want to create a process, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah, not everyone is a process geek, right? Uh, so what are the guiding I, I can stay on this slide, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, what are the guiding principles for creating a process that minimizes the amount of pain across our community? Uh, so <laughs> we want to remove barriers, not add new ones. <laughs> we want to, people are busy already. We want to, like, there will be overhead, but it has to be like minimum, a minimal. So, we need to follow existing conventions, reuse existing tools. Uh, we already have uh, a reputation system based on uh, GitHub and uh, Git commits history and so on. Uh, we're already doing triages uh, using uh, tools based on uh, uh, GitHub, uh, Git, and so on. Uh, we want to avoid the Byzantine processes where you don't even know who to talk to or what's the next step or you need to like follow Diagram, organizational diagrams, all that should not happen. It should be like all in public, transparent, uh, and also like that being transparent in public forces uh, uh, IPFS stewards, spec stewards to review things. Because uh, uh, the queue of things that people propose not being reviewed looks bad. So I think it's beneficial for everyone to behave well. Uh, and. I need to address this because someone will ask this, uh, why not RFC? Uh, we had a discussion about that. Uh, initially, it was suggested to be RFC, but then uh, RFC means different things depending on the project. And the biggest 
RFC is from IETF, and it means totally different thing than uh, it, the, the meaning is different across projects. In some projects, it means request for comments. In other projects, it's request for change. Sometimes it describes the delta of the spec. Sometimes it's the spec. Sometimes it's the spec and how you use the spec. So just to avoid uh, confusion, depending so to avoid confusion for, uh, for by the fact that people come from different backgrounds and have different notion what RFC is, we just went with its own name. Um, so I will br briefly show you uh, some uh, markdown screenshots uh, how the process works. Um, in IPFS specs repo, there's an IPIP directory. It already has two files. One is a template, uh, and the second one is the improvement proposal which describes the improvement proposal process. Um, so uh, the process itself, just mark the document, summary, motivation. Um, literally the entire talk could be summarized into this one line. The purpose of uh, improvement proposal document is to document motiv motivation behind the change. Um, and not being the spec itself. So it's a description of the delta. If you have nothing and you add a new thing, uh, you explain why. If you have something and you change something, you explain why. Um, and how would you propose uh, improvement proposal using this system? Uh, you open a pull request against IPFS specs repo. You copy the template um, from the IPIP directory and you fill it up. And you do whatever changes to the spec repo you want. You add new files, you modify them. But this is a very small basic structure for us to know that, oh, if I want to evaluate this improvement proposal, I go to that document first. And that makes it easier not only for uh, spec stewards to review uh, proposals, improvements, but also for community to have, uh, um, as a community, have a common uh, audit trail of historical decisions. Sometimes we end up with things which may not be obvious why we make those decisions. And right now, the knowledge is scattered across repos or even worse, across the brains. Um, we want to start tracking decisions. So we stop spinning wheels, uh, explaining over and over why we made some decisions and we can just refer people to. Um, the template itself, it's focused on motivation. Um, if you have a detailed, detailed design, it's probably be, it's refer, describing changes made to other files. Uh, however, what's important, we have some sections which uh, ensure people who propose uh, improvements think about some things. For example, test fixture section. Uh, how would you want implementers to test the spec you are proposing? Uh, there's design rational. There are different aspects, different dimensions you need to cover or at least mention when you are proposing something. Uh, user benefit, compatibility with existing ecosystem or non-IPFS ecosystem, uh, security, and what are other ways of doing the things you are proposing and why you, you did not pick those things. So it's just like a list of bullet points that helps people to flesh out things and also speeds up review process because we avoid back and forth. Oh, could you? Oh, what about security? No, like when you create a proposal, you already have those uh, blank slates that you need to fill up. Um, and right now, the idea is uh, best effort, very informal process where spec stewards will, just like we uh, implementers have a weekly or bi-weekly triage, we will have a triage of incoming improvement proposals and we'll get it from there. We'll probably improve process. If we see uh, we need some policies around some, making some decisions, we'll make new uh, improvement proposals clarifying that or we'll uh, uh, adjust as we go. But this is like a starting point. At least we have some, and, uh, some common ground for proposing improvements. Um, and I will end this with a call for our IPIPs and just as a food for thought, I will show some already opened pull requests. They may not use the latest version of template, but ignore, those are like editorial changes. Of course, we'll 
um, before we merge uh, them, uh, they will be aligned with the latest templates. Um, what the hell I did with this slide? Okay. <laughs> so uh, we recently landed a bunch of HTTP uh, gateway specs. So most of uh, improvement proposals uh, are against that because this is what happens when you have specs that describe the thing. People know how the thing works. They may propose delta against it. If you don't have the description of the current state, people are not able to propose delta. So maybe uh, gateways, uh, subdomain gateways and DNS link gateways, which are used in the browser for website hosting, uh, maybe they could support redirects file and that would help with uh, single page applications or uh, help people migrate to hosting just on IPFS without breaking all the links. Uh, maybe uh, being able to fetch entire directory, UNIXFS directory as a tar archive will help not only uh, IPFS uh, desktop users, uh, but anyone who wants to fetch uh, something with curl and pipe that to tar. Um, Maybe we want a separate namespace for IPLD with things like uh, advanced da data layouts, selectors, or whatever. Um, and maybe we want to close the uh, integrity verification gap around the NSLink websites. Uh, we have car responses. Uh, we can verify content inside of a car. But if you had DNS link pointing at that CID, you, have this, you, you still have to trust DNS, Gateway, or whoever did the job. But maybe we could return DNSSEC proof inside of that car uh, and make that implicit behavior of gateways. It's additional block, in theory, inside of that car. It's just a second route in that car. Um, uh, those are just uh, initial proposals that just happened right after we uh, created gateway spec. Even before we had an improvement proposal process, some were created and then readjusted to reuse the template. Uh, but it kind of shows that when you give people venue and you provide a very uh, easy convention, uh, like people don't need to read the improvement proposal uh, like the first one. They could look at existing like last two proposals that got merged and do the same thing or just copy the template and wing it. Uh, and I think that's fine. Uh, I think it, removing barriers, making it easier for contributors is our aim. Uh, and that's all I have. I did not track time, but the idea was probably run uh, too fast, so there's time for questions. And, uh, <laughs> and I got some prompts, because uh, right now uh, there's a separate GitHub team with uh, called Spec Stewards. Uh, Right now, it uh, le mostly leads from uh, IPFS uh, lib P2P implementations uh, and IPLD, I believe. We should invite Eric. Um, but over time, the idea is that we will have uh, people uh, consume, like senior people consuming specs, uh, people who are uh, invested in. Uh, spec quality to contribute and share the responsibility of reviewing. Um, and another question, potential question is how would we do the testing? So I kind of like try to answer that by uh, different specs will have um, different uh, text fixtures, different ways you think about testing. So we, we will not have a single test harness for IPFS. We will have maybe HTTP gateway interop uh, maybe some uh, specific data layouts will have their uh, test fixtures in form of CIDs or cars, which people implementing could include in their test suits. Um, and then when we clean up IPFS specs repo, it still needs some work. Um, should we surface specs on docs IPFS IO? Should there be a better presentation than just markdown on GitHub? Probably we could have spec section it's not that difficult. Uh, so those are just prompts. Feel free to ask any other questions. Yeah. Let's so the I GitHub IPFS organization, like who are admins of that and how do we decide who are admins of that? Yeah. 
I believe there will be talk about exactly how that works and who, who is calling the shots. Uh, the short answer is right now it's owned by Protocol Labs. Uh, and I think it's a, a, the uh, implied question is, should we maybe move IPFS specs uh, uh, to different uh, org or should we discuss uh, the long-term ownership of IPFS uh, org uh, as a whole should maybe it be transferred to foundation. It's like kind of out of the scope, but uh, it would be useful to understand how things work right now. So I believe Piotr will do that. Yeah. Uh, just to comment, uh, looking at some of the things in there, definitely see inspiration from a lot of other systems. Uh, yes, let's talk about how to generate web pages and publish them to IPFS from those markdown files. Um, I think uh, one of the things that always comes up with this that we should uh, do early on is um, a uh, CLA process to make sure that all of the IP in there is uh, is cleared. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, there's a bunch of bots and other stuff like that. So we totally. have it for the um, uh, you can spec that, that Brooke set up. So I think that there's some, and we in turn, use that as a template from a repo that was a good bottoms up community process. So I already saw that you had CC0 on there, which is great. Yeah. And uh, a few little more things. And then ideally, I think one of the goals should be everything from um, random hackers off the street who are uh, P2P working on whatever they like and larger orgs that we I ideally uh, invite people in. Does that kind of match how you're thinking about it? Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh we should uh, do the diligence around legal stuff. Um, as I said, I kind of like started with prompts. This entire thing is a prompt. And I've put CC0 just to spark a discussion. I'm not saying that's, that's the way, uh, but at least it's there. So someone can propose Delta. And I think creating an improvement proposal that clarifies our, uh, excuse me, uh, clarifies our like stance around uh, but things like patent, because you got copyrights, you got licenses, yeah. and you also got patents. Yep. And there, those are things which I'm not expert. Yep. I don't even feel I'm comfortable talking about this. But I think as a community, we can figure this out. Awesome. Or especially if Vision could like create the issue of giving some thoughts or suggestions of what you would. Yeah. Do. So and I think there's you've got a 4 p.m. slot today um, for extended discussion. Yeah, there is. Uh, I'm afraid there's a conflict with browsers, uh, but we'll figure it out. So, is there anyone you th or are there any communities or projects that you think do interop testing really well that you can like praise or share, like as a good paragon or something? And it and you can say no. It's fine. I'm just curious. Um, so. I have a thing that I like, and it's not, and it's actually an IPLD project. Um, what I like is, so it's natural to think, oh, there's this like test harness running, testing interop. Uh, however, with what you are testing. So I think IPLD project shows an interesting prior art in that, yes, it's a project focused on data structures and so on, but if you look at their specs, every spec for things like DAC, PB, DAC, uh, Cyborg, DAC JSON, and CARS or whatever, they have test vectors. They have uh, files which test all the edge cases and people who create the spec know where like, the, the bodies are buried, right? So if anything goes wrong across different languages, implementations, it will be, oh, in this car because we use all three formats and so on. So I think first thing is to create uh, culture and also a uh, prior body of specs with test uh, fact fixtures which describe how to use test vectors. And uh, then we may, th uh, may decide that, oh, for the gateways, it makes sense to have some CI which runs against gateways, or you can maybe run a CLI tool and test your own gateway. We have something like that for pinning services. Uh, Russell created a compliance test for that API. It's a simple uh, HTTP and API. For gateway, it's a bit more advanced API, but still, you could, in theory, test it with curl. But the, the way you do testing, the test fixtures will be depending on the spec. So I think we uh, should focus more about having uh, test data, test vectors first, 
and then we can figure out. Because maybe that do we need a, a generic thing like for, for something like gateway? Sure, but for BitSwap, uh, probably implementations may want to like, create their own tests and just use maybe fra frames uh, f from the spec as test vectors. So we'll see. Okay. Do you mind if I jump in? How do I know when to file an IPIP or when do I file a PR against either the specs repo or a specific implementation? What, oh. was, what heuristic would you use? Okay, so uh, I think like if you have an idea but you are unsure, you are unsure, open an issue in IPFS specs, uh, saying, hey, should this be improvement proposal or should I discuss this? Uh, if you have a pretty fleshed out idea, I'd say copy the template and just add something. Uh, you, there's also like template for the spec itself. So if you want to add a totally new thing, uh, let's say I have a, in the uh, process, I use a web dev gateway as an example. If you want to add the new thing, you would add improvement proposal document arguing why it's a good idea, what's the motivation and so on. And then you would add the second file with the spec itself. Uh, I'd say don't be stressed too much about markdown formatting or if I covered all the sections, it's fine to leave sections out if you are unsure, mark them like TBD. And then as, during the review process, we can like iterate for weeks over them, uh, fill up the gaps and so on. Uh, my question was gonna be similar, like where's the boundary there? And in, I would recommend actually being pretty prescriptive around I, specifying what the criteria is. So uh, things that change that change compatibility. So if it will break pre, you know, prior implementations or things oh. like that, like I think there's probably a set of discrete things that you could maybe not require, but at least check boxes. To, oh yeah, totally. To, uh, so just to be clear, I, I misunderstood uh, also. So uh, in, in, the, uh, in the document described in the process, uh, IPIP, uh, the first one, uh, uh, there's like description, like things like editorial changes, which don't change the, the meaning of the spec or adding more detail, which don't change uh, interop, that could be a PR without uh, improvement proposal. However, if you add something which may mean we suddenly add more burden to implementers, then it's probably IPIP. But we will figure out the policy. Probably we want to uh, write it down at some point after we go over a few proposals to get a better feel how people are doing them. I think in general, and I think for this track generally, I would love to find the uh, con canonical dis discussion space. So I would probably file a PR saying, don't do the written version of why you should care about this thing in this spec repo at all, because that's the sort of opinion discussion thing. And you don't go straight to a spec, you talk about it before you do a spec. So mm -hmm. in other communities that have been a part of discourse forums have been used very successfully for this. There remain other questions like, should there be a more research engineering focused discourse forum or can we reuse the existing forum and add more features to it or other things like that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it's really, really helpful to have a space that is um, less aggressively GitHub-y to uh, start discussions in uh, yeah. that is more inclusive. Yeah, I, th I think it's a valid point and we could have like a specs incubation category in, in the forums. Uh, so that may be less intimidating. Some people may have an idea, but maybe not the technical uh, details yet. Um, so I think discuss category is a good uh, plan. Do you have any thoughts on, like the only way I've ever really seen interrupt get done in an expedient way is like with economic incentives to do it and or economic disincentives to not do it. Otherwise, it just seems like you treat the standard as a commons that can be extracted from as opposed to like getting people to actually like interrupt in the standard. So like do you have any, from your perspective working on this for so long, like do you have any ideas, like does that sound right or consistent with your perspective? And also like do you have any ideas for how we can pay people to interrupt? Yeah. Or pay make people, people to make behave nicely to, to each other. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> make people behave nicely to each other <laughs> through brute force. <laughs> yeah. So here, yeah. yeah. So I have. Uh, so actually, I have a mental model. Um, I, I like to create. Uh, like I like protocols or like processes which make the easiest path the right path, 
so pe even people who don't care about behaving, being a good community member, uh, uh, if it's in their best interest, uh, I think that j just figuring out a way uh, to, to kind of like ga game it. So for example, um, make, I think the way we structure specs uh, also could translate to that. And I'll give an example. Instead of having a single spec which says you need to implement blocks, cars, you need to implement Unix FS, DAC Cibor, DAC JSON, oh, and also DAC Jose because everyone wants the encryption and so on, uh, you suddenly made it impossible for someone who does not care to do the right thing. However, if you decompose specs into uh, distinct primitives and say, like, for, I, I will use Gateway because I'm the most familiar with that. For example, uh, you have uh, distinct layers uh, in the gateway spec uh, around response types. So uh, people who don't care about websites or don't want to use their ga gateway for the delegated uh, hosting of uh, third-party files, they may not implement UnixFS at all. They may not uh, implement that part. Uh, they may only implement block and car responses. Uh, and if we make it clear in the specs that you don't need to do the entire thing, people will, if we define those like stop points, hey, you can do this and say, that's enough for me. You can do this and you get this additional interoperability uh, and you can do this additional thing. Uh, I think we cannot expect everyone will do everything. I think we should uh, do it in the best effort fashion that everyone will do blocks. And even if someone does not care, care about IPFS or IPLD at all, they, their gateway will still be useful uh, as an HTTP transfer for blocks. Uh, it's, at least that's my like, mental model. I think we, we could do, uh, we could help people behave nicely by not introducing too much burden to them. Because people have uh, eco uh, socio-economical uh, uh, constraints and we should be cognizant of that. Thank you, Lytle. Um <laughs>